Multiple variants. Excellent. Tell me if you agree with this. No, no, no. Don't throw the question back at me. I'm asking you, Mansoor, what, I understand, what is what I the definition? Is, say if you have a text, the word is different. That's a variant. Be more clinical in your definition of a textual variant. I just told you. So if you have a text, a text is if you don't know, it's fine to say you don't know. If a text is made of letters and words that makes up a sentence or a chapter or a book, whatever that might be, you can have variants within a letter level, within a word level, within a sentence level, within a paragraph level, within a whole book level. Yeah. You can have variances in all these types. And would you agree that a variance is any difference between two texts? Yes. So agree that that's the definition of textual variance. Do you believe that there are textual variants in, in uh, manuscripts of the Quran? Yeah, there are available. Yeah. So there are textual variants amongst different Qurans. Are okay. oh, we agree? Different Qurans explain. Well, the moment now you're, you're using a suddenly a loaded language. No, 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 no. A textual variant makes a manuscript different from one to another. If I have, if I print a, 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 a word of text, a letter that I write to you, and then you give me the same letter back, but you change one word. We have two pages, but they have variants, so they're two different texts. No, same text with textual variants. Ver yeah, yeah. It, no, so, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. So we've got a variance between the we've got a variance between the manuscripts, haven't we? We got let's two manuscripts let's, let's about with, a, with, a, with a, a different if, we, if a manuscript is about the Quran, we're talking about it's the same Quran with textual variants. And do you agree that there are textual variants within the manuscripts of the Quran? They exist, yes. They exist. Do those variants, at what level do you think they exist? At the letter level, at the word level, at the paragraph or, or sentence sure. level? So let's understand what a variant is. Wait, we've just done that. No, 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 no. No, we defined variant no, no. before we continue. We, we haven't defined it. We have just given a working definition. Because there's a difference between non-Islamic tradition of what a textual variant is and an Islamic tradition. Because we can have a variant which is equally authoritative and accept it as being Quranic text. Fair enough. To give an example, working, let me give an example okay, to yeah, understand yeah, okay, my point. Okay. So if you have a word called Malik exactly, and Malik, exactly. yes, between the hafs and the wash text. They mean two different things. Between the hafs and the wash, you're using an example. Not just hafs and the wash, yeah. Yeah. the other readings. So you have these two different words. They may be written the same in the Uthmanic consonantal skeleton, but the two different words. But because these words all come from our traditions of reading all the way back to the Prophet we say they are equally authoritative represented of the Quranic text so they are from the Quran with different readings okay. so one could be readings of Hafs from Asim and other one could be readings of Warsh from Nafi okay example. so we, we've established that there are textual variants within the Quran now using the example that you've just given if I'm right the word that you used has a slightly different meaning, doesn't it? The, the I just words. told you they are different. Yeah, they're def different meanings. So what we have, in essence, is, is a, a, a variance of meaning at the word level. Yeah. Is there anything deeper than that? Does it go, are there any variances of, of phrases, sentences? You tell me. No, I'm asking. No, I want you to tell me. No, why do you, why, I ask you a question and you throw it back at me. I'm asking you the question. Don't avoid the question, answer the question. You if you don't know, that's fine. So what I don't know, not do you know? No, no. I, I'm genuinely inquiring. I'm genuinely inquiring. Uh, genuinely inquiring. Yeah, genuinely okay. inquiring. So you that can does have, happen. You can have, you can have Quranic manuscripts which has totally different phrase. Yeah. But is if they do not fit within the accepted readings that have been transmitted to us in this authentic chains of transmission, we would say these are not part Part of the Quranic text. Fair enough. These are shawad or shad reading. Fair enough. So, so what we've established, what we've established from talking to you, Mansur, is that all of these Muslims that for years and years and years have been telling everyone in the world that the Qurans are identical across the world, they're wrong. 
the, the Quran has not been changed, not one letter what, not one word, not one dot, not one tittle. All of these Muslims that have been saying that, you've just said that they're all wrong because you've just identified that there are differences between different Qurans at the word level. And you gave an example on video. So you misunderstood? No, no, no. You gave this example. I'm not deaf and I'm not stupid. This was the example you gave. Uh, I didn't say you're deaf and I didn't say you're stupid. So you are self-inflicting those titles Cut to yourself. the case. Cut to the case. No, 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 no. First of all, do not somehow insult me by saying that I called you deaf and I called you someone who's stupid. I didn't. I only said you have misunderstood. Misunderstanding can come from even if you're a professor and having three PhDs, you can still misunderstand. Just because a professor with three PhDs misunderstands, I'm not going to call him deaf or stupid. So you need to speak to me in a way that is polite and acceptable. So do not use language which is really vulgar in the way. I've not insulted you. you I spoke about myself. You just have. Please continue. Sure. So as I said, I haven't said that you are not any of those. I said you misunderstood. So let me explain. The reading of Hafs. Now I stand here and I will tell you the reading of Hafs that he learned from his teacher Arsene, that he's learned from his teacher Sulami, that he's learned from his teacher and all the way back to the companions of the Lord in Masoud, Ubaid in Ka'ab, Uthman bin Affan, or Yallahu Anhu Ajma'in. All and back to the Prophet This reading has not been changed to the letter, to the dot, to the word level, to the sentence level, and so on and so forth. So when the Muslims claim that, they do claim it exactly. So if we now examine the reading of Hafs, go around anywhere in the world, whether in the Indian subcontinent area or in the East, in Philippines or Indonesia, or go to Africa and Morocco, get the reading of Hafs and trace the transmission of the reading of Hafs. And now you tell me, where has the change that has occurred in the reading of Hafs? So there's two points that I would take from that. Firstly, your de your, you've narrowed your defense of the Quran solely to one reading and by implication that seems to be that you've abandoned the other readings as being pure texts which implies therefore that readings such as Wash are a corruption of the Hafs text. The second point that I gained from what you've said is that you're saying to me that there has been no variations at any time in history to the Hafs traditional manuscript. So the, the, the tradition of the uh, manuscript evidence connected to the Hafs reading has remained pure. Now, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're saying? So all the two points that you made needs a slight correction. Why? Because you again misunderstand whether willingly and deliberately, which I don't know, which I would not assume, I would assume genuinely misunderstand. I am not see, implying in any way, shape or form that the other reading, Warsh or Susi or Duri or any other readings are by implication corruption, which you misunderstand somehow. I am saying when Muslims claim of the transmission of the Quran and Quranic readings and they haven't changed, you can break them down to the readings that they are talking about. So I gave you an example of one reading called Hafs from his teacher Arsen. You can do this likewise for Warsh and all the other 10 Mutawatir readings. And the claim would still be that yes, this reading has been transmitted likewise in this meticulous nature of preservation. This is how they are preserved. So I gave an example of a Hafs reading because I can talk about it because I've looked into it. If you want to talk about it, we can go as much detail as you want in the Hafs reading. So because you seem to know something about it already in your you know, the, the, the vocabulary that you're using, I would expect you to continue talking about the Hafs reading and point to me the differences that you so think exist. If you want to talk about the other readings individually, we can talk about them as well. But as I said, I am only limited to in the readings that I examine. But the brother said he cannot talk because he's not proficient and knowledgeable on the subject. Secondly, the other point. Um, what was the point that you mentioned? Second point? Well, manuscripts from the first century. Manuscripts. Now, Hafs reading, you are again conflating. The reading of, can we find traces within the manuscripts? No. The reading is Did you say no? So, so I, I don't want to interject I am, I am for a explaining. No, I want to interject just to clarify something. Are you saying that the security of the Hafs reading is not in the text? 
I am saying this reading is transmitted from teacher to student, teacher to student, and goes like this through memorization. So, the text to be clear, Mansoor, to be clear, I, I really want to be clear on this. Are you saying that the security what that you, you believe it, uh, the, the reliability, the purity of the reading is not secured in the text, that it is secured purely by oral recitation. Okay, so I'm not sure why you're using the word security and reliability. Whichever saying, vocabulary no, no, no. you feel, me feel more comfortable with. I am with. saying the transmission of the Quran is by this. So you memorize the Quran and you tell the whole of the Quran or repeat the whole of the Quran back to your teacher. Your teacher is satisfied and the teacher gives you the ijazah or permission or a certificate that you continue this teaching. This can be independent of a text because you can be a blind person and you can still have an ijazah without even reading anything. Braille is a recent concept, recent tool that people use in a written form. But the Quran has been transmitted even through perhaps blind people. It doesn't have to be through a text. So when we're talking about the transmission of the Quran, the primary mode of transmission and preservation is the memorization way, the oral form, the recited form. Okay. So in this way, let me finish so, my point. So, no, in I, this I think way, I gathered your point. You haven't, I haven't, let me I, and you spoke for quite a in, while. It's not about speaking for I, I, a while. I, I, I need to make my point. I think you've spoken for quite a while. So you understood what I, I said? I, I believe so, yes. You're, you're saying that the, 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 the recitation is an oral transmission from one reciter, I think they're called Muhafs, or what's the Arabic term for someone who memorizes the Quran? Is it Hafiz? Hafiz. Hafiz. So it's what from one Hafiz who teaches a student to become another Hafiz and so on and so forth down through the generation. And that's the security of the text, it's the security of the, the recitation. The reason why I have a problem with this Mansoor is because if that was the primary, re primary reason by which the Quran was secured in its transmission from one generation to the next. The actions of Uthman in the first centuries of Islam and of, and of the, the, com the companions, the Sahaba, seem to indicate to me that they did not have confidence in the oral transmission as being secure because when the Muslims were in dispute about how best to recite the Quran their solution to the problem was not to form some school where one memorizer taught lots of other people to memorize and so on and so forth their response to securing the, the continuity of the Quran and to make sure Muslims did not disagree amongst themselves was to create an edited text, a formal version, an authorized version backed by the Islamic State. That tells me that actually the early Muslim community did not share your confidence. The early Muslim community thought it necessary to secure the recitation of the Quran in manuscripts. And if that's the case, which I believe the evidence points to fairly, when we read the hadith, Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih al-Muslim, what that seems to point to me is that we need to look at the text of the Quran because it's the text of the Quran that helps people to learn the recitation. I suspect that every Muslim here, when they are reciting the Quran, they're not just hearing it and repeating it. They may be hearing it and reading it and repeating it, and that's the process of memorization. And if that is true, then that means the text is integral to the security of the recitation. And if that is true, we need to analyze the manuscript evidence to see if the manuscripts are consistent, to see if the Quran has or has not been subject to change. Would you agree that that is a fair and logical conclusion from the evidence? Let's have a look. When you have the dispute in Azerbaijan, when the Muslims were disputing in their recitations, what was the nature of the dispute? Uh, about the recitation, how to, how to what recite What was it? the nature of the dispute? I, I don't know exactly, no, the hadiths don't made, seem to no, say. No, hold on one second. The hadiths right. do not say precisely what the dispute was about, only that they disputed about how the Quran should be recited. 
that was the dispute. That's what I see in the hadith. Anything you say further to that, you'll have to give evidence for. So you made an assertion, all of this logical deduction based on something that the actual core issue that was in dispute, you don't even know. What were the Muslims saying to each other? Where are you getting your sources? From the same source. Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih al-Bukhari, right? What does it say? It doesn't say exactly what they were disputing. What does it say? It says they were disputing the recitation. They were disputing about how the Quran should be said. Well, then you tell me, no, please. No, no. Can we pull up it? Can no. we pull it up? I don't know you, if you've you got you it on you. It up. You Mansour. made a claim, pull it up. Mansour, you're here every week. And excuse you're me. here every listen, week. Listen, listen. You made a claim. Evidence? You made a claim, I'm saying no. So you need to now prove that this is what the text and the hadith say. You just made a claim, this is what he says, and based on that... Yeah, I agree. It's a double standard. I have to prove my point, he doesn't have to prove his. It's a double standard. No, I didn't say I don't have to prove my point. I'm saying you made a claim... And if I am wrong, prove me wrong. You substantiate your claim. If I am wrong, prove me wrong. I've made a claim, now give me the counter proof. You made a claim, prove it from the evidence. Okay, so I, I haven't got it in on me. I don't mind admitting that. I'm here as a tourist. You're here as a missionary. So let's be clear. Oh, you're you, no, no, you're I'm here as a tourist. You're here as a missionary. You're here as a missionary. Okay? You're the missionary. Mansoor, you're on this television. You're on YouTube all the time being here. I'm here as a tourist. You're the one here every week. You're saying that my claim is wrong. I'm asking you to prove me wrong. So give me your evidence. Don't create a double standard where I I have to prove all my now, points talking, and you don't have to prove any of yours. Talking about double standards, look at look at the excuses that we hear. It's astonishing. Oh. One second, one second, let me finish. Astonishing. You come along here making a big thing out of some issue which you haven't got a real grasp of. So you made it into, oh, the reason why it happened. Your actual reading... Man, so just admit you don't have the evidence. Let me finish. Oh, look, look. Look at the way they work. Oh, le the way they work. Oh my gosh. Excuse have me. you listened to this man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look Listen at the way. To the to Look at the way they work. Excuse me. Let me finish. Who are you talking to? Let me finish. Dude, I'm right here in front of no. you. As Not a, they work. I'm right here. Speak to me. As a tourist. Speak to the, me. The way you work. They work. Who are you talking about? Who are they? What's your name? No, who are they, Mansour? You. No, they. So I'm a plural now. Yeah, yeah. Who are you? I'm a plural. What's your name? Oh, do, do you understand plurality and singularity? Uh, I'm sure you do. You talk about it all the time. Yeah, yeah. What's your so name? So who are they you're I'll talking about? Your, your subtle attempt at demonization just now. Excuse me, what's your name? I'm sure it'll will. It, it's okay. What's he will your name? edit it out of his video. Here? He and will. Here. He they. will. They. 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 He will they. edit they. it out of his Thank video. You. Ah, you're included yeah. now because yes. you dared to speak. Excuse me. You dared to speak. No, relax. He'll edit it out what, of his video. Don't worry. Clapping, Anything that embarrasses him when you make goes out of his video. Goes so out of now his video. They. Anything. They. Oh, now it's a they. Me and the sister have never even met. Do, 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 do you see that? Oh, it's going to be edited out. Look at this filthy, filthy... Oh, look at the demonization again. Look, Mansour, just admit you don't have the evidence. Excuse me. Just admit you don't have the evidence. Wait a second. He's been talking now for five minutes. Okay. I asked him Another to prove strategy. me wrong with the evidence. Okay, now. And he's not giving me any evidence. Okay. You know what that's called? That's okay. called waffling. Okay. It's called waffling around the subject. The one you that. do it in interviews all the time. When you don't know the answer, you just talk and talk and hope that they okay. forget the question. Okay. What's so, your name? What's the evidence, please? I'm going to give, what's your name? What's the evidence, I please? You don't need to know my name. What's the evidence, please? I do need please? to know my name. No, you don't need to I know my name. I need to know your name. No, you don't. His name is Bob. Yeah, call Bob. Bob. My name's Bob. Yeah. Bob the Builder. That's it. My name's Bob the Builder, everybody. Pleased okay. to meet you. Okay. I can fix it. I promise. Shall I give you another name? What's your name? Yeah. So, go on. What, where, where's your evidence, please? I am about to give it to you. I am name. waiting. What is your name? Yeah, my name's Irrelevant. Irrelevant. I call him Irrelevant. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's fine. Okay. Now, Irrelevant made a claim that, you know, the text is integrity to the security of the readings. This is a one-sentence summary. And the way he arrived at this conclusion is by looking at reading Sahih Bukhari, and Sahih Bukhari apparently says Muslims didn't know how to recite the text. That's not what I said. What did you say? That's not what I said. You see, you see, Mansour, you if Correct. you're going, if Correct. you're going to summarize my argument, yeah, tell me what it said. is on an onus upon you to do it accurately. Yeah. What did you say? I was responding to your claim that the recitation of the Quran was secured in an oral tradition. And the way that I responded to that was to point out that in the first century of Islam, the early Muslims didn't seem to share your confidence. <laughs> because in the first century of Islam, when the Muslims in Azerbaijan, who were about to invade Christian Armenia, 
disputed amongst themselves the recitation, the response of the Islamic establishment, the caliphate, was not to create a school where one oral teacher would teach lots of students to memorize the Quran orally, but to create a text. And if that was their response to the danger of disputes amongst the Muslims about the recitation of the Quran, that suggests to me, quite logically, that actually the, the security of the text is not just in an oral tradition, but also in the manuscript evidence. And I furthered that by pointing out that all of you who are reciting the Quran, whether you can understand it or not, and I suspect a large proportion of you can't, that the vast majority of you are not just hearing it and repeating it, but you're hearing it, reading it, and repeating it. Which means that the text in this essential part of the means of transmission. That was my argument. Okay. So now, as you realize, it's, it's made it quite clear what he means. So I asked, what was the nature of the dispute between the Muslims in Azerbaijan? What was the nature of the dispute? What were they saying to each other? And I've already said that the, 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 the 